individuals do not change fundamentally in who they are without a very serious personal crisis of some kind. But the conclusion again, or for us perhaps the, the key conclusion is, that is a wrong question to ask. Revitalizing people has a lot less to do with changing people and has a lot more to do with changing the context that companies, that senior managers, that people in this room, create around their people. Now, context, uh, some manager called it the smell of the place. It's, it's a hard thing to describe. And, and let me try to describe it the best way I experience it, through my sort of personal experience, if you wish. I, I teach at the London Business School. I live in London, have done so for the last year and a half. Before that, I lived in Fontainebleau in France for about eight years. But one look at me, and then one sound of my accent, and you know, I do not come from either of these two wonderful places in the world. I come from India, from the eastern part of India. My hometown is the city of Calcutta. So every year I go to Calcutta in the month of July. That's the only time when my children have a summer vacation. Now, Calcutta is a wonderful town in, in winter, autumn, uh, and spring. But, but summer, well, the temperature is 102, 103. Uh, the humidity is about 99%. And I feel very tired. Most of my vacation, I'm tired, I'm indoors. I used to live in Fontainebleau, and this I genuinely challenge you. Go to the forest of Fontainebleau in spring. Go with a firm desire to have a leisurely walk, and you can't. The moment you enter the forest, there is something about the crispness of the air. There is something about the smell of the trees in, in, in spring. You'd want to jump, you'd want to jog, you want to catch a branch, run, do something. And that, I believe, is the essence of the problem. Most companies, particularly large companies, have created downtown Calcutta in summer inside themselves. And, and then they complain. They say, you know, you are lazy and you don't take initiative and you don't do, take cooperation. You are not uh, changing the company. The issue is it's not about changing me. I have a lot of energy in, in, in spring in Fontainebleau. And I'm a bit tired uh, in summer in, in, in Calcutta. And, and that's the issue to change ultimately beyond all these abstractions of strategy, of organization, of processes. At the end, the issue is, how do we change the context? How do we create Fontainebleau Forest inside companies? Now, what's, what's the typical context? Typical may be too strong a word, but what's the context that you find in many companies? Not from the esoteric level, where most of the people in this room sit, but from, from the perspective of, of, of this frontline person, the salesman in Lyon. Top management creates strategy, Chris talked about it, and, and that, how does it come down to this frontline person, to me, the salesman in Lyon? Constraint. It tells me by product, by customer, what I can do. It's a box of constraint. The smell, and then try to relate to that metaphor. Uh, we, we all see it. We enter a place, in the first five minutes you get a smell, you get it in the hum of uh, people, you get it in the quality, the color. The smell is constrained. Compliance. Companies create this elaborate infrastructure of systems, planning systems, budgeting systems, financial systems. All of it boils down by the time it travels down to me. The smell it creates for me is compliance. I got to comply. Control. My relationship, not just with my boss, but with the entire management infrastructure is one of control. It exists to control me. And finally, contract. We repeatedly use the word, you know, your job is a personal contract, relationship with the company is a contract, budget is a personal contract, transfer price is a contract. So, constraint, compliance, control, contract, that's the smell we create. That's what I live in. And then, we say, you know, you've got to proactively create change, you have to take initiative, you have to cooperate. Where are you going to get those behaviors? What we found in our research, on the other hand, is, is a few companies that have created an environment uh, that we describe as cons the, the dimensions of stretch, discipline, trust and support. And, and let me take a minute or two to explain them. Where top management does not create this strategy that boils down as constraints, but rather creates an exciting set of values, uh, an aggressive ambition, all of which create a smell of stretch. Not stretch, we want to be a hundred billion dollar company or anything, but stretch in the sense every individual 
all the time is trying to do more rather than less. Um, not, not compliance or all the systems that create compliance, not compliance, but discipline, embedding norms of self-discipline. And you can see that in companies. You can see where day-to-day -day behavior is shaped by these embedded norms of self-discipline. Self-discipline is, yes, it's meeting the budget, but it's much more. It is if a meeting starts at 9, everybody's there at 9. It is if people collectively agree to a decision in a management committee, even if individually you disagree, you do not start challenging that decision or unraveling it immediately outside in the corridor. I mean, in Intel, you see this norm, agree or disagree, but commit. Yes, people debate, people argue, but at the end, a decision is taken, and then agree or disagree, but commit, self-discipline. Also, not control, but support. The whole role of senior management changes where they are not seen as, as the exercises of control, but as those who exist with one purpose only, which is to help me win by access to resources, by coaching, by guidance. And finally, not contract, but trust. And, and trust more than this very contractual sense in which we use the word trust. Trust in the sense that says, if you carry that card, I may be in Australia and you may be in the United States. I may have never met you, but the fact that you carry the card is good enough for me to let go of the safety of business as usual and, and fly, knowing that you will be the safe pair of hands at the other end. So stretch, discipline, support, trust. And, and I'll, I'll invite you, don't take those words, don't, don't, don't intellectualize those words, but try to sense the smell that, that can be created if those are the norms of behavior. And our research says two things. One, it is possible to create that smell in companies. There are companies, and of the companies that were part of our sample, 3M is, is one example where a management can create the smell and protect it over long periods of time. That's assertion one. It is possible to do it and protect it. Assertion two, it is also possible for a determined management that has inherited more of the downtown Calcutta in summer uh, to convert it to, to the Ponton Blue Forest, to that new context. And, and while uh, we, we do not know Alcoa or Piat very well, I mean, from the discussions we are having this morning, some of that has been done in their companies, but we have seen others where it has been possible. And, and, this, and, and the statement that, that we would make is, ultimately, what's the test of quality of management of a company? Performance, we know, is a very noisy measure. This, to our mind, is, is a real test of quality of management. The context that managers create, that shapes the behaviors of people, creating this stretch, discipline, trust and support.